<clears throat> Mr. President, 2020 set a record for drug overdeaths in America. More than 93,000 lives were lost in the year 2020. In Illinois, 3,500 of our neighbors died of an overdose, a 27% spike from the year before. How did we get to this point? Who is responsible for this? There is one clear culprit, the pharmaceutical industry. For years, opioid manufacturers deliberately lied about the risks of their drugs, deliberately. These companies have claimed their painkillers should be prescribed for common aches and pains. They even downplayed their addictive nature, even though their research showed that it was a very real danger. These companies then shipped mountains of these pills to every corner of America. They aggressively promoted them to doctors with the backing of dark money organizations. This epidemic wasn't created by some infectious virus. It was created by corporate greed. Corporate greed. In the words of Richard Sackler of Purdue Pharma, his company chose to flood our streets with, quote, a blizzard of prescriptions that will bury the competition. It ended up burying the users. As a result, 500,000 American families have had to bury loved ones who died of opioid overdoses and addictions since the start of the opioid epidemic. 500,000 Americans, a figure in the same range as the 610,000 Americans we've lost to COVID-19. The numbers are numbing. From 2006 to 2014, drug companies like Purdue Pharma inundated the country with 100 billion pain pills. 100 billion. Let that soak in. That's roughly, roughly 300 opioid pills for every living American. They flooded communities like the rural county of Hardin in downstate Illinois. They received enough opioids in, Harlan, in Hardin County for each resident to have a three-month supply. Some counties in West Virginia and Kentucky had twice that level of oversupply. One farmer rep even bragged, quote, I don't know how they can even house this many bottles. Another wrote, keep them coming, flying out of here. It's like people are addicted to these things. Oh, wait, people are. That level of greed and disregard for human suffering is an outrage, and the companies responsible must be held accountable. You may be asking, well, haven't we done that already? It's a good question, because not only was the Federal Drug Enforcement Administration aware of this obscene volume of overproduction, they authorized it. They gave permission. The Drug Enforcement Administration of the United States federal government is responsible for determining the amount of opioid pills allowed to be put on the market each year. They are effectively the gatekeeper for these drug manufacturers. And for years, years, they allowed opioid production quotas to keep increasing. Between 1993 and 2015, production of oxycodone increased 39-fold, hydrocodone, 12-fold, fentanyl, 25-fold. In 2016, America's pharmaceutical industry produced 14 billion opioid doses in 2016 alone, enough for every adult in America to have a three-week supply of opioids. Think about that. Authorized by the federal government, requested by the pharmaceutical industry, we put a quota that Pharma asked for to produce 14 billion opioid pills in a year, enough for every American to have a three-week supply. Any wonder that we had an opioid epidemic? I pressed the Drug Enforcement Administration on this issue years ago when I learned of this. I asked them, how can you approve these ever-increasing quotas? Pharma is insatiable. They will ask for as many pills as they can possibly push into the American people's families, especially when DEA had data that showed this overproduction was fueling a deadly national drug crisis. 
A couple years ago, I worked with my Republican colleague, Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana, to start stemming the tide of addictive drugs. We passed a bipartisan bill that gave the DEA the authority they said they needed to set common sense production levels. We changed the law so the DEA must, must consider abuse, overdose deaths, and the public health impact when determining opioid quotas. Our approach worked, partially. Over the past five years, the DEA has lowered opioid quotas by an average of 60%. The DEA, this federal agency, will soon be proposing its 2022 quotas. And I'm sending a letter urging them to use their new authority and common sense to rein in the greed of big pharma. In the face of all this suffering, new legal challenges have been brought to hold big pharma accountable for death and despair of the opioid epidemic. Thousands of lawsuits from states, counties, cities, victims have been consolidated in one federal court in Cleveland, Ohio. This movement reminded me of another breakthrough moment in public health when our nation came together to hold big, to big tobacco accountable for its misleading marketing over the decades. We started holding these companies accountable in 1998 with the Master Tobacco Settlement Agreement. That settlement was estimated to provide states with $246 billion over 25 years. But despite the pressing need, only a tiny fraction, a meager 8% of that amount, was actually dedicated to, to tobacco prevention and cessation activities. Instead, with the permission of Congress, tens of billions from that settlement have gone toward filling gaps in state budgets and funding pet projects like roads, and bridges, stadiums, even a tobacco museum. As new opioid settlements are reached, we must learn from the missed opportunity with tobacco lawsuits. We must ensure that the funds from forthcoming opioid settlements are used to fortify health systems so they can respond to the current opioid crisis and prevent our next drug epidemic. All of us know what's going on out there. Even people who acknowledge their opioid addiction and are desperate for treatment and need help immediately, wait for weeks and months to enter a drug rehab facility. That's just unacceptable. We need community and residential-based treatment. We need to expand naloxone access. We need to bolster our behavioral health workforce. We need to address the childhood trauma, often at the root of addiction, and other public health strategies. Mr. President, one of the things which I believe is essential as our kids get back to school after the pandemic experience, we need more counselors on the scene at the schools dealing with these kids in this transition back into somewhat normal life. These are critical moments in a child's formation, and I hope that we can have resources available to help them. The best way to hold Big Pharma accountable is by compelling these companies to pay the price for fueling this crisis. And their restitution should be devoted to helping America heal. Last month, a bipartisan group of state attorneys general announced the framework of a litigation settlement involving Johnson & Johnson and the nation's three largest drug distributors. The companies would pay a total of $26 billion over 18 years to resolve the suits in addition to changing their business practices. The work isn't over yet, and I applaud the state attorneys general for their extensive work involving these opioid defendants. Legal proceedings continue for several other key industry stakeholders that have yet to be held accountable. That includes the Sackler family of Purdue and OxyContin infamy. The Sacklers are trying to engineer a legal scheme to escape liability through the bankruptcy court. That's the family that started Purdue Pharma, that was responsible for this opioid crisis. They think they found a venue now, a bankruptcy court, that is gonna get them off the hook, or at least make sure they can protect the money that they've made off of this criminal enterprise. The Sacklers are trying to engineer a legal scheme to escape liability for their conduct through the bankruptcy court, avoiding future lawsuits while paying $4.5 billion while protecting their vast fortunes estimated at over $11 billion. That's why Senator Warren and I recently teamed up to introduce 
the Non-Debtor Release Prohibition Act, which would prevent the non-consensual release of liability through bankruptcy proceedings. Translations, the Sackler, Sacklers should not get a discounted ticket to ride into the sunset protecting their billions of dollars. They need to be held personally accountable, and the amount that is charged against them should reflect the gravity of their conduct. As legal proceedings continue against other opioid industry defendants, we must demand that the worst corporate actors are held accountable for their role in this crisis. Far too many families have suffered as a result of corporate greed and malfeasance. Mr. President, I have one additional statement which I ask <clears throat> be placed in the record. I would just like to speak for a moment or two uh, on that statement. Without objection. Mr. President, sometimes you have the best of luck in life, and it's uh, not planned. But neighbors of ours in Springfield, Illinois, Tom and Bridget Lamont, have invited us to join them at their little house uh, on Lake Michigan uh, up in Leelanau Peninsula of uh, the state of Michigan. In that uh, time, we've had great experiences together, and we've come to know, uh, know a terrific little shop called Barb's Donuts in Northport, Michigan. After years and years of wonderful service and great product, they are giving up the business soon, and I have put in the record a tribute uh, to Barb's Donuts of Northport, Michigan. I am joined in this tribute by Debbie Stabenow and Gary Peters, the Senators of Michigan, and I ask consent that this statement be made a part of the record. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. Suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin. 